One of the key features of a network is centralized storage. There are many, many options out there that you can choose from when it comes to storage and odds are you'll find something suitable for you. The advantage is that you can automate backups of your PCs and other devices. You can also keep all your media in one spot rather than having to spread it around the network. We are also increasingly wanting to consume media on various devices and having it stored in one spot just makes it so much easier to do. The most basic way to get network storage happening is to use your router. Most routers now come with one or two USB ports designed specifically for external hard drives and printers. The router software itself handles sharing and all you need is a USB hard drive. This is a limited solution though and routers with a sole USB port are better used with printers not storage. The step up from this solution is a networked hard drive. These come in various forms. This model's a good example. These tend to have a bit of management software, usually focused on backups, and plug into an ethernet port. If you have serious storage needs though, you'll want a NAS. NASs are basically small servers, with low power processors, RAM, and software designed to enable more advanced sharing options. They come in various shapes and sizes, shipping with and without hard drives. They usually support various levels of RAID, so you can add further data redundancy, and can natively do things like DLNA compatible streaming, which is handy for the PlayStation 3. One of the advantages of a NAS solution is that the capacities are much larger. This one, for example, has two 3TB hard drives inside. A 4-bay NAS will work with only two drives, allowing you to plan for future storage needs as well. NASs are by far the most flexible solution short of building your own server. Printers are also becoming increasingly network friendly. As we mentioned before, some routers will happily take a USB printer and run it as a networked one. A lot of printers and MFCs also have wired or wireless networking options. Unless getting that print as fast as humanly possible is a driving need, or you're printing a lot of very large files, you'll find that wireless is good enough to connect with, especially if you're low on Ethernet ports. And that concludes part two of PC and Tech Authority's Home Networking Guide. Check in next time where we'll look more at configuring home storage options. Thank <laughs> you.